What's up guys and welcome to another fun art DIY video. Lately I've been obsessed with sculpting. I've always wished I had the skill set to like sculpt marble. I think it's some of the earliest art forms and one that like is insanely time consuming. Like most great art to be honest. In today's video I'm going to show you guys how I made a marble rubber duck. However, this video is more about the technique rather than the actual art piece itself. The idea here is I show you guys how to do it and you sort of run with it and make whatever you want in marble form. Now in this video, you're gonna see some products that are specific to this effect. I don't know how to do this any other way. So I suggest if you're gonna try this, that you do use the items that I'm showing in this video. And I explained why they need to be that item. Not like a sponsored thing at all. It's just like cure times and stuff like that. So you'll get it when you watch, okay, just watch. One last thing before we get into this, guys, please give this video a thumbs up. If you enjoy my content, you enjoy anything in this art video, um, it really helps out my channel. It helps with my video, so <laughs> thanks. <laughs> Please do it. Please do. It. it does help. I've learned it helps. I've not been pushing it all these years, but now I've learned it helps. Okay. Please enjoy this. How to turn anything you want into marble. All right. Welcome. Now, the time of filming this DIY, I was actually totally out of UV resin, except for this really expensive crystal clear resin. This is from a company called Moncure 3D, and it is the only clear UV resin that remains clear and not yellowed once printed. So I loaded up a rubber duck 3D file, and this is it being printed in a time lapse. It took about five hours to print, but it looked awesome. What's really cool about using crystal clear resin is that you guys can finally see what the infill on prints look like. It looks like it's taking up most of the space on the inside, but there's tons of air in there. And as you can see from the head and tail, it's actually holding on to some of the resin. So it's important that we added the drainage holes. Next up, we need to get this piece off of our build plate. And bam, there it is. I wanted to do a rubber duck. I thought it was a really fun little object that we can turn into a marble effect. The idea for this video is not to necessarily make a marble duck. It's to show you how to make anything marble. The duck is just the shape we're going with. And you can see on the bottom that I added the drainage hole so anything on the inside can get out. Next, it was time to post-process this. We put it into our ultrasonic cleaner and then soaked it in 99% isopropyl alcohol. And the reason why I use an ultrasonic cleaner is that you can see here it vibrates super quick and that actually helps scrub the uncured resin off the surface of our object. Once that sat for four minutes on each side in the ultrasonic cleaner, it was time to dry it off. Now, sometimes with UV prints, the supports will actually have a little piece sticking onto our object. So I just went in with 150 grit sandpaper and cleaned it up. Next, it's time to deal with the drainage holes. We need to close these up because if we don't, silicone is gonna get in there and fill the inside of the entire object, which is just a huge waste. This is where Total Boat's UV resin comes in. Easily my favorite type of resin. It cures instantly under a black light and it has sort of a gel texture. I use this Total Boat UV resin and then blast it with a black light for honestly probably 30 seconds. You can even go less and then do a couple layers of that. And that's gonna fuse all the drainage holes shut so no silicone gets in there. If ever you work with resin projects, I highly suggest you have a bottle of Total Total Boat's UV resin on hand because it cures immediately. Once the holes were fused shut, I just went back with 80 grit sandpaper and sanded down any extras. Now it's time to seal our duck. This part is essential if ever you're gonna mold something with silicone that has been 3D printed. The reason being is most UV resins have chemicals in it that actually prevent the silicone from curing. So you have to add a top coat. It doesn't need to be a triple thick clear gloss like I'm doing. They've got clear ones, they've got matte ones. Just make sure you put a top coat on it and seal it. Once our piece was fully sealed and had time to dry, it was time to start our molding. For this, instead of building the walls with foam core, I figured we can use a bucket because the duck fits perfectly inside. But before I put the duck in, I'm gonna spray some Mold Release 200 on the inside. This is gonna prevent the silicone from actually sticking to the side of our bucket. While that has time to settle, I mixed my one for one part silicone together. This is always so satisfying. It looks like this delicious blue yogurt. I did tell you guys in previous videos, I will always be including this because it is so satisfying to watch. Once the silicone is one consistent blue color, it was time to put our duck inside of the mold and then pour our silicone inside. Next, I want to show you a trick that I actually showed in a few videos ago. It's how you can save money on silicone. Now, I have this old mold that I never really used, and instead of throwing it out, I decided to cut it up like it's a cured piece of meat into little chunks. This is going to displace some space inside of our mold, so we're not using as much silicone. So you can see a piece of our cut up silicone just above the duck, 
and then I'm pouring in fresh silicone. The idea is the more recycled silicone that's in there, the less fresh silicone we need. So once the fresh silicone set, I then started putting in chunks of the old recycled silicone and you could see it start to raise up taking space. Mixed up another batch of silicone. And then pour that in on top. Something to always remember is that silicone will always fuse to other silicone. So all those recycled bits are now forever a part of this mold. It's just a really great trick to recycle silicone instead of just throwing it out and spending all this money on new silicone. Another thing that's great about it is you do not need to put this through a vacuum chamber. As you can see here in this time-lapse video, it will actually degas itself. 45 minutes later, our fast curing silicone was ready to be demolded. And this is where I struggled. I actually couldn't, the mold release didn't seem to do anything and I couldn't seem to get the silicone out of the bucket. I don't know if it was the suction, so I actually drilled a hole in the top of the bucket, and then I drilled holes in the side, and then I put some painter sticks in there to try to get air, nothing. So I ended up just cutting up the bucket and uh, threw it out. I will say most of the time, mold release does a great job, but for some reason, it didn't work this time. Once the mold was out of the bucket, it was time to get the duck out of the mold. But since it actually narrowed in on the duck's head, I actually snapped it off. But the good news is it lets me show you what the infill is like on these prints. They are so fragile and small. They're literally thinner than a grain of rice. So this is what 20% infill looks like. It's not even a third of the piece, but it looks like it's filling up a lot of space. Now, before we get to the marbling effect, I do want to use mold release again. It does work really, really well in silicone. So I'm going to spray that, let it sit for five minutes. And then I'm going to use some elastics to hold our mold shut. In order to get the duck head out, I actually had to do a zigzag cut. So just to reinforce the mold shut, I'm using some elastics. All right, now it's time for the marbling effect. For this, it is essential that you're using Smoothcast 325. It's gotta be 325, guys, and let me show you. This stuff comes in three different curing times. Make sure you're getting the one that cures in 10 minutes. The pot life on this thing is two and a half minutes. It's insanely fast. I really wish I could say this was for beginners, but this marbling effect leaves very, very little room to make any errors, and you gotta work fast. But I'm gonna show you how to do it in this video so you can feel more confident trying it on your own. First, you're gonna need a big mixing bucket and then five plastic cups. Next, you're gonna grab some dye that you want your marbling effect to be. So for this, I just want a classic white and black marbling. So I got some so strong black resin tint. Next, you're gonna need to grab this powder called Omnicarb. It's actually sort of like a stone powder. It's not very expensive and you can get it in pretty big batches. Next, you're gonna fill two of the plastic cups with Omnicarb all the way to the top. Looking back at this, I probably could have done this a little cleaner, but I was just so excited. Once our two cups were full of Omnicarb, we were done with that for now. So you can close that up and put it away. Next, you're gonna grab part B, okay? Part B is the clear portion of this resin mix. And you're gonna fill that the same amount as one cup of the Omnicarb. The mixture here is two cups of Omnicarb for one cup of resin. Once that cup is filled with part B, you're gonna pour the exact same amount of part A. So you're starting to actually see the mixing ratios here. So just a recap here, you're gonna have two cups of Omnicarb to one cup of resin. So that's a part A and part B, and then you're gonna have a mixing cup. In your fifth and final cup, you're gonna take your dye and do a little bead of it at the bottom of the cup. Now to start mixing. We're gonna pour part B, which is the clear portion, into our mixing cup, and then pour one full cup of Omnicarb inside. You're gonna mix that till it's fully blended together. And then you're gonna add in the second cup of Omnicarb. So all we have in here is part B and then all of the Omnicarb. The idea here is once it's fully blended, the texture is gonna be like mashed potatoes, sort of like oatmeal-ish. It's gonna be thick and it's not gonna look like your traditional resin. So this is where it gets intense. I'm gonna go ahead and pour the full cup of part A and the chemical reaction and the curing clock starts now. So I'm gonna mix this together as fast as I can, but also making sure that it's fully blended. And at this point, it's actually gonna go back into a sort of watery type of resin. Once it's been fully mixed, I'm gonna siphon off a small amount into our cup that has a little bit of dye in it. I'm gonna go ahead and stir that with a popsicle stick. Again, being very quick here, because it's already getting hot. And then I'm just gonna drizzle a tiny amount of our black mixture into our bigger mix. 
This is what's gonna create the veins in our marbling. You are not at all gonna mix this or blend this. You're gonna leave it exactly how it is, just like this. You're then gonna pick the bucket up and pour directly into your mix, sort of moving the bucket around to create swirls. This is now creating the marbling effect itself. And I can tell you from holding the bucket, it's already starting to get warm from the chemical reaction. No joke guys, out of any resin I've ever done, this stuff cures the fastest. Now I obviously over poured here. I figured I'll add the remaining amount of our black dye and I'll pour the remainder of that into our apple mold that I did a few months ago. Something to consider when pouring is that this stuff does expand as it starts to cure. And the reason we have to go with a fast curing resin is that it will not allow the black dye to settle. It's actually gonna cure before it sinks to the bottom. The good news about a fast curing resin is that your piece will be done in 15 minutes. It'll still be warm to the touch though. Once we demolded the duck, you can see how amazing this effect is. This is the marbling effect of our duck. Now again, you could do this with anything as long as you have the molds. Now, as you guys know, if you've watched some of my DIYs, I've got a ton of professional silicone molds that I've made in the past. So I decided to have some fun with it. And I wanted to try a marbled Nike shoe to see how that looked. So I mixed up another batch and then poured that in. And you can see here, the marbling is actually happening when it comes out of the cup and then hits the surface. You're not blending any of the dyes together. I then made another batch. As you can see, just drizzle it on top and then directly poured it without mixing anything. I figured it would be kind of cool to make one of those resin guns I made last year. Of course, I had to do a marble iris. This is from one of my most recent DIYs. And once it all cures in 15 minutes, it's amazing. We've created a marble iris, a marble gun, the marble apple. Oh my gosh. Guys, look at this apple. That looks like a marble apple. For some reason, the stem is red. I guess that's from leftovers. Oh my God. That looks so good. <laughs> And lastly, and easily my favorite of them all, the marbled Nike shoe. This actually looks like a Nike shoe. It's been carved out of marble stone. Oh, I love it. I'm, I'm obsessed with this effect. And honestly, I'm so glad I had all these high quality molds lying around. And there you guys have it. That is how you turn anything you want into marbling effect. Remember, this video was less about making a marble duck. This was just sort of a placement holder, but more so about taking any silicone molds you have. You can even buy silicone molds off of Amazon for like pretty cheap. And you can try out this marbling effect yourself and create your own sort of ancient stone looking sculptures. Another thing is in this video, I use the black and white classic marbling look, but you could actually do red and white. You can do red, blue and white. You can do pink. You can add multiple colors. It's just when you drizzle it in, never mix it. And you can drizzle in three or four colors and then see how that marbling turns out. Honestly, I want to create this video to teach you guys how to do it rather than doing the art pieces that I'm doing. If you enjoyed this video at any point and you want to try this, please, please give this video a like. If you want to come back and see more art videos once a week, you can subscribe to my channel too. And if you don't want to wait a week in between art videos, my Instagram, I post behind the scenes daily of new things I'm working on. Thank you so much for watching my video again this week. I appreciate it. Go out there, create something fun. It is amazing what it does for your mind. At least for me, it's super therapeutic. And I'll see you next week in my next video. See you guys later.